Hey folks, I'm Tristan from Noisegate, here with the Aturia Mini Brew 2, which is of course the long-awaited follow-up to the modern-day classic that is the original Mini Brew, which was one of the synths which helped kickstart this analog golden age we're experiencing right now. I'm just having a jam here with the drum brute, and as it turns out, it's a lot of fun. So I thought I'd try to break down exactly what I'm doing, and just give you an idea of what it's like to create sounds and perform using the new Aturia Mini Brew. Once you start getting your hands dirty with a patch bay here, it's possible to create all sorts of unusual, peculiar sounds. Um, but being an analog monosynth, making cool bass sounds is of course really simple. Um, so I've done this just by using a square wave with a triangle wave with a second oscillator. The square wave just sounds like this. I've adjusted the pulse width to fatten it up a little bit. I've also blended in a triangle wave with a bit of metalizer. Now the metalizer in the Mini Brew 2 is a bit more restrained and subtle than the um, rather abrasive metalizer in the Mini Brew 1. Uh, which means it's a really musical effect and uh, really blends in nicely when making these sorts of bass sounds. It sounds a bit out of place by itself, but added with a square wave. Just fills things up nicely. And then I bought in a second oscillator, which is a brand new feature of the Mini Brew 2. The Mini Brew 1 had a sub oscillator which you could tune an octave or two down. However, this oscillator two is completely tunable and we have a choice of three waveforms. I've just chosen a square waveform and tuned it an octave up. Just makes a nice, big, rich, fat, bright bass sound. Then I've dropped the filter cutoff right now. Added some resonance and some filter modulation from the ADSR envelope. Um, to top things off, I added some brute factor, which just saturates things, adds a bit of overdrive. Now I have this pretty dark bass sound that's also kind of fat sounding at the same time. Okay, once you have a sequence programmed in, there's a couple different ways you can interact with it, which are accomplished using shift and the octave up and down button. The first is transpose, which means we can just move the melody up or down by various semitones. The second one called key play is really fun and pretty interesting actually. We can temporarily interrupt the sequence just by playing keys, and then the sequence will immediately resume once we stop playing. This is a really cool and interesting way to play because you can easily stumble on fun ways to play off the program sequence. It feels a bit like juggling. You can also use this mode to throw in impromptu lead melodies. Unfortunately, the filter's set too low, um, so we can hardly hear the lead melody. And if we turn the filter up, it'll ruin the bass part. We can easily get around this, though, using a bit of patching ingenuity. If I take the output of the keyboard and plug that into the filter cutoff, uh, the further up the keyboard we play, the more it'll open the filter. Unfortunately, this partially overrides the filter cutoff knob, so we don't have as much control over the brightness of the lead sound. We can get around this by instead making this patch connection via the attenuator section. So take the output of the keyboard, plug it into the attenuator in, then take the output of the attenuator and plug that into the filter cutoff. Now, using the attenuation knob, we can control how much effect the keyboard has on the filter cutoff. And we can still control the bass filter cutoff using the cutoff knob. This is great. It's like having a separate filter cutoff control for the bass and the lead sound.
Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you have any feedback or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section and we'll see you next time.